Empire. Welcome to Inside the Cap. I'm your host, Joel Corey. You can find me on Twitter at Corey Joel. That's C-O-R-R-Y-J-O-E-L. And also read my regular CBSSports.com column, Agents Take on NFL Salary Cap and Contract Matters. Our focus is going to be on Saquon Barkley and the running back market. Um, prior to last Sunday's games, um, it was reported that the Giants and Saquon Barkley had been engaged in contract negotiations which have broken off and are tabled until the end of the year. Um, Barkley confirmed the negotiations and also said he wants to be a giant for life. Barkley is playing under a fifth-year option uh, this year for $7.217 million. Um, And Barkley has um, reestablished himself as one of the top running backs in the NFL. Um, Through Week 10's games, um, Barkley was leading the NFL in rushing of 931 yards on 198 carries, 4.7 yards per carry. It's um, 103.7 yards um, per game. It's also second in the NFL behind Tyreek Hill in yards from scrimmage with 1,128. Um, Barkley's projected at the pace he's on, to have 374 carries, which would be easily a career high for 1,759 yards, which would also be a career high. Barkley's never had more than 261 carries in a season, and that was his uh, rookie year. Now, running backs can be kind of tricky because... uh, You really don't get a second big contract from a running back. You can sign one as a veteran. You're not going to sign a second. The longevity isn't there that there is in other positions. And typically, if you have a career year at your position, most other positions, you reap the rewards in free agency. Their running backs, uh, these teams have gotten leery about paying running backs particularly as they get into their late 20s because the menacing returns. Barkley is 25, turns 26 in February. So you would think that you could get a 26, 27, 28, and then got to worry about what happens there um, with Barkley. The running back market really hasn't moved as much as other positions. And I'm going to use wide receiver as a um, example. In 2011, Larry Fitzgerald became the highest paid non-quarterback in the NFL um, on a deal averaging $16.14 million per year. Now, where the receiver market is gone, you've got Tyreek Hill who signed on paper a deal averaging $30 million per year as an extension when he was traded to the uh, Dolphins from the Chiefs. We we're talking 11 years later. And we got the DeAndre Hopkins deal, which averaged uh, $27.25 million on the new money done two years ago, the extension average. You have Devontae Adams, which is really a three-year deal at $22.5 million. On paper, it's 140 over five at $28 million per year. But you've seen that market increased dramatically. 2011, top the running back market was Adrian Peterson on a deal averaging $14.2 million per year. Now, where's the running back market? Top of the running back market is Christian McCaffrey. And in 2020, McCaffrey signed a four-year extension um, after his third NFL season, which averaged a um, little over $16 million per year, so with uh, about 39, like 39.2 of overall guarantees and a shade over 30 fully guaranteed at signing. That kind of tells you how the league views running backs. 
because there's not much of an increase, and we're talking 11 years. In fact, you only have three running backs who are averaging more than that Adrian Peterson deal. And one of them is, for cosmetic purposes, $15 million. Now, you have Ezekiel Elliott, who's second to me for a real $15 million per year deal as a uh, running back um, that he signed in 2019 after a holdout, um, lengthy holdout at the end of the preseason, which has the most overall guarantees running back deal of uh, shade over $50 million. He's at $15 million per year. Alvin Kamara technically is at $15 million per year, but there's $25 million in the last year of the deal. So realistically, you subtract that out, and you're talking a four-year extension at $12.5 million per year instead of 75 over 5. So that's the only three running backs who are ahead of where Adrian Peterson was 11 years ago. Now, there are eight running backs who are averaging more than $10 million per year. I've already mentioned three of them. If you've got Dalvin Cook, who's on a deal averaging $12.6 million per year, that's a five-year extension he signed in 2020. Um, Derrick Henry was franchised in 2020. He signed a four-year, $50 million deal. We got Nick Chubb, that in 2021 uh, signed an extension, three-year extension averaging $12.2 million per year. Joe Mixon in 2020, four-year extension averaging $12 million per year. Aaron Jones um, in 2021, um, that March in free agency, uh, 48 million over four years. But that's really like the Camara deal. It's really 20 million over two years because you've got a 28 million in the last two years, and he's got a 20 million dollar basically cap hit in 2023. We're supposed to make 16 million. So. That's where the running back market has gone. So that kind of tells you the neighborhood of where you probably were negotiating with um, Saquon. Now, the reason why teams are reluctant is are you getting your return on your investment for running back? Because there have been some cautionary tales uh, with running backs. And even some of these guys who are on their current contracts, once they've gotten paid, haven't lived up to their potential. So that factors in this whole backdrop of negotiation because the first one you look at in terms of cautionary tales is Le'Veon Bell. In 2019 free agency, after he sat out 2018 because they didn't want to play in the second franchise tag, goes to the Jets. Four-year, $52.5 million contract worth up to $60.15 million through incentives and escalators. Had a then veteran record of $27 million fully guaranteed um, in signing bonus. He didn't last too long. <laughs> he had a 21-game stay in New York, made over $27 million uh, for his 21-game stay in New York. Because in year, year two, they pulled the plug. <laughs> At least in five games into the 2020 season. Now, you had uh, Todd Gurley. And this is a really curious one. That in 2000. 18, the Rams signed Ty Gurley, just totally reset the running back market to a four-year deal, averaging four-year extension. We had two years left on his rookie contract. After year three, averaging $13.735 million per year. It's maxed out at $60 million through escalators. As soon as he got paid, has a lack, had a career low in rushing yards. Not as soon as he got paid, 2019 had a career low in rushing yards. So he never played any of the new years on the deal. He made $20 million more had they just written it out and let him play through year four of his rookie contract. And Todd Gurley is out of football now. Went to the uh, Falcons in 2020, and he's retired. <laughs> and we've got David Johnson as a cautionary tale as well. David Johnson... Started his career like gangbusters. 2016, led the NFL in yards from scrimmage. Had over 2,000 yards from scrimmage and 20 touchdowns. 
injury plague 2017 right after Gurley gets paid shortly after I should say 30 uh, three year extension for 39 million dollars maxed out at 45 million slightly under 32 million in guarantees by 2020 he was gone he was uh, dealt in the trade to acquire DeAndre Hopkins and he's never had anything remotely close to that 2016 season and he just signed on the Saints practice squad so that's what you have to measure against running back contracts and these are just the guys who have been your huge cautionary tales and you could look at some of the guys who as I mentioned are still in the league, like Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott hasn't been the same player he was before he got paid, once he got paid. That Ezekiel Elliott was averaging 100 yards per rushing game, 100 rushing yards per game before he got uh, paid. Hadn't, he's not. He's no longer the best running back on the Cowboys. That's Tony Pollard. He's got a hyperextended right knee, I believe, but... Uh, Questionable to play this week against the Vikings, but Tony Pollard, two games Ezekiel Elliott's missed, gone over 100 yards each game. I would be surprised if Ezekiel Elliott's a cowboy next year. Probably going to be a salary cap casualty. Maybe for post June 1 designation. Christian McCaffrey was an Iron Man um, prior to getting paid. Christian McCaffrey joined Marshall Falk. And Roger Craig is the only players to have a thousand receiving yards and a thousand rushing yards in the same season. This dude was on the field for over ninety percent of Carolina's plays in 2018 and 2019. Then he became a walking injury basically in 2020 and 2021. Missed 2023 at 30, uh, 23 of 33 regular season games prior to his trade to the 49ers so Carolina didn't really get anything besides a bunch of draft picks to replenish uh, them being in re- being in a rebuilding mode for having Christian McCaffrey so I'm sure all of that is factoring in the equation for the Giants now on the flip side if I'm the um Saquon's agent, I'm looking at it from the standpoint that, hey, my guy's having a career year, and I want to reap the benefit of that. This McCaffrey deal was done in 2020. This is basically a three-year-old deal. And I've already explained how the running back market's been fairly stagnant over the last decade, because I would have neglected to mention another cautionary tale, is that same year, 2011, um, right after uh, Peterson got paid, Chris Johnson ended his holdout, who had had a 2,000-yard rushing season, um, got a deal averaging $13.5 million per year from the Titans, basically, just a shade under 13.5. And he never played any of the New Year's under that deal. He got cut before he played any of the New Year's under the deal. Had two years left on his rookie contract. Went to the Jets, had a lackluster performance there, and wasn't in the league very long. So, but... Nonetheless, if I'm Saquon's agent, three-year-old deal, I want to be the highest paid running back in the league. Yeah, getting to the $50 million in overall guarantees that uh, Zico Elliott has, well, that's not realistic. I'm looking at a four-year extension. Um, five, if I have to, because I'm not going to get another big contract after this as a running back. That's just, how, it's just the nature of the beast. Now, Derrick Henry, that'll be interesting. He'll be going into contract year this year for Tennessee. And we'll see if he gets an extension. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me because he is the offense there. <laughs> More so than Saquon is here. But because um, Saquon, I'd say I'm counting for 37% of the offense. Is basically what is Derrick Henry counts for a little bit more in Tennessee this year. So my importance to this offense exceeds practically anyone else's in the, in, in the league from a running back standpoint. I'm pointing for that many yards of the offense. So I want to be the highest paid guy. So I want like 31 at least fully guaranteed, close to 40 or more. I want to hit the 40 mark, really, um, in overall guarantees on my uh, 
four-year deal. We'll talk, take. We'll say it's a four-year deal because it'll be done after the season. Now, I don't know where they left things off, but for the Giants, it was probably they they had a good idea of whether they're gonna have to use a franchise tag or not. If I'm the Giants, I don't come anywhere near the McCaffrey range because of the things I've already talked about. Now, Giants got two guys who get a franchise tag potentially. Um, Daniel Jones, quarterback, fifth-year option was not picked up. Or Saquon Barkley. Um, I don't know where the Giants uh, were in terms of their offers, but they were probably informed a little bit by the franchise tag, thinking, well, if we can't get a deal done, we could stick a franchise tag on him. Um, I saw an ESPN article that the running back franchise tag is estimated to be between twelve and a half million and thirteen million. Ain't no way in hell that number is going to be that high. Not a prayer. There's a better chance of the Houston Texans winning the Super Bowl this year than the running back franchise tag number being that high. And franchise tags is uh, to simplify it. It's the average of the top five running uh, back salaries from the previous year, usually cap numbers. That's oversimplifying it. In 2011, with the that CBA, the franchise tag formula got overhauled. And the way they do it now is, and that's how it used to be, very simple, average of top five running back salaries from the previous year. That's your number. Boom. Now, it's convoluted where you still have to calculate the average of the top five running back salaries from the previous year. So you take that number and you look at it over the past five years. So for this year, it would be the 2018, 19, 20, 21, and 2022 franchise tag numbers under the old system. You take the sum of that number and you divide it by the sum of the actual league-wide salary cap for those same five years, and you get a percentage. And then the actual franchise tag number is that percentage times what the salary cap is going to be for the upcoming year, for 2023, in Barkley's case. Now, that number has been steadily going down. In 2022... It was 4.6% of the cap. 2021, it was 4.742% of the cap. In 2020, it was 5.186% of the cap when Derrick Henry was franchised. His franchise tag number was 10.278. In 2021, the number was 8.655 million. It's because the cap dropped 182 million because you got that percentage you multiplied by 182.5. There you go. It jumped to 9.57 in 2022. Now, here's the problem of why you're not going to get nearly that high. The 2017 number is coming out. You've got 8.648 million coming out when the cap was 167. So that's 5.178%, a number of 5.178% coming out. You've got 9.513 coming in with 208.2 as the 2022 cap. So that's 4.56 coming in. So just from sheer how this thing works, it's not going to not going to happen. It's going to be 4.489% of the cap is what the franchise tag number is going to be. That's going to be $10.1 million. So you're talking a franchise tag number of $10.1 million. Not $12.5, million. At $12.5, we'd be talking about 5.56, 5.5% of the cap, 5.5% of the cap. Not happening. Uh, salary cap, I'm using two twenty five dollars as a projected salary cap. That's uh, maybe a little low. I don't know what's going to come in. Um, but I know teams using 225. So you're talking 10.1. So you could franchise him twice. Second year, 12.12. I got to imagine the Giants factor that in the equation. So we're talking like 
11. Average two franchise tags is 11. So I don't know where this 12 and a half, 13 million dollar number came from, but the tag is going to be in the 10.1 range. You stick a second tag on him in 2023, then you're basically talking 22 million over, a little over 22 million over those two years. Now, if I'm the Giants, um, I'd be more comfortable in that $12 million range, $12, $12.5 million range, where you've got multiple other running backs out of those eight. Because you've got Aaron Jones cosmetically at 12, Joe Mixon at 12, Derrick Henry's at 12.5, Dalvin Cook's at 12.6, and the one... I might be focusing on is a guy that was uh, in Barkley's draft class 2018, Nick Chubb. And the interesting thing is Chubb is almost two years older than Barkley. He did a three-year extension, so said averaging $12.2 million, um, per year. Uh, that would probably be the range I'd be most comfortable in. He's $20 million in total guarantees with that deal. And if you look at from a franchise tag standpoint, what was done with Derrick Henry, I'd kind of, that's why I'm thinking the Chubb rank. If he played two franchise tags, it would have been basically 22.6. And his tag's a little bit higher, the first one, than where Barkley's will be this year. In his deal, they gave him 25.5 fully guaranteed over the first two years on a four-year deal. So that's about 13% more in the first two years than he would have had by going year to year on a deal averaging a 12-5. So I'd be looking along those lines because if I'm the Giants, and I know it's a new regime, everyone's been cleared out, uh, front office, the coaching staff from who drafted Barkley, but I mentioned cautionary tales earlier. In a sense, Barkley has been a cautionary tale. Great rookie year, second year, was playing well, had the high ankle sprain, so statistically he wasn't doing what he did in the first year. Nonetheless, still went over a thousand yards um, in the second year. Um, played 13 games. Tears the ACL in the third year. Comes back in year four. Not the same guy. 593 rushing yards on 13 in 13 games. 3.7 yards per carry, which is why. He's playing under the fifth-year option, and this year, boom, career year. So he's already been a cautionary tale. Um, so there's no way I'm going to that uh, McCaffrey territory. And to me, if I'm the Giants, I want to get one of two guys done before March 7th because that's the deadline for you to designate a franchise player. I would be leaning – typically, a quarterback is more valuable than a running back. But they had a similar problem with Daniel Jones. They didn't know what to do with him, that he didn't show enough in his first four years. I mean, um, first three years, after three years, he had to pick up the fifth-year option to pick up the fifth-year option. So he's now in, in um, year four, no no fifth-year option. That that, that fifth-year option is going to be $22.384 million. He's playing best football of his career. But you're not winning games with his arm. And um, is Saquon Barkley is now tagged him Vanilla Vic because he's very mobile and he makes a lot of plays with his legs. But you got a choice here where you're talking a tag of 10-1 on a franchise tag. You only put one tag on, on a team. You can, on a, one, a team can use only one tag per year, either franchise or transition. So you can't tag them both. You would be talking... In terms of 10-1, the way it's going to work, the way it looks like it's going to work out. Or you could go franchise tag of $32.445 million, 14.42% of the salary cap for Daniel Jones. Or you could go transition tag instead of 29.53 for Daniel Jones. Giants might have a hard time psychologically getting over the fact we could have had him for under for twenty two three eight four, but now we got to pay minimum, basically seven two more for the fifth year, or basically about 
a little over 10 million more. <laughs> and you might, and if you don't think Jones is a long-term answer, and knowing how important Saquon is as offense, because one of the things is the agent I'm also pointing out is all these other guys who got paid, there's, look at the other, the complimentary players, or maybe that's not the right word, but the other skill position players around them. I got nobody you have to worry about in this offense. I got no receivers that scare teams. I don't have a tight end that scares teams. Derrick Henry's a focal point in Tennessee, but at least he had A.J. Brown and, and Corey Davis uh, before that. When McCaffrey was still there, Greg Olson, D.J. Moore. Ezekiel Elliott, great offensive line. Mari Cooper. The degree of difficulty, if I'm the agent, I'm saying, is much difficulty for for Saquon. Um, I don't think that's that's probably going to fall on deaf ears. Look at Dalvin Cook. You had Stephon Diggs, Adam Thielen, Alvin Kamara. Had um, Michael Thomas. So I'm bringing that up as well. Because another thing you got to worry about is if you, if you don't stick a franchise tag on Saquon, where could he go? The one team that would scare me would be the Chicago Bears. They traded for Chase Claypool at the trading deadline because they knew that the receiver market wasn't going to be great. They have the hottest dual-threat quarterback in the NFL right now, Justin Fields. David Montgomery is going to be a free agent they're running back. Once you have a top 51 factored in, it looks like they're going to have right around $110 million in cap space. So that's a team that could overpay Saquon Barkley if they wanted to. Looks like they're transitioning more to be an offensive team, weapons around Justin Fields. That might be the wild card team, which, you know what? We'll, we'll make Saquon the highest paid running back in the NFL. I'd probably just stick the tag on Saquon and go from there. And if I'm the agent, yeah, I come in and ask for being the highest paid guy. Do I really think I'm going to get there? No. Yeah, um, that's where you ask for. What would I uh, want realistically? If I could get to Ezekiel Elliott, the 15, yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. Given the traje- trajectory of increases in this market. Now, if I'm the uh, Giants, yeah, I don't really want to go above Nick Chubb. Saquon gets through the whole year. Yeah, I'm thinking, okay, that David Johnson deal. 39 over 3, max is out at 45. You got 32 million in total guarantees, basically. Kind of guarantee the first two years of that? Yeah. Fully guarantee the first two years of that. Could do that on a three-year extension. Maybe four. Stick it out to four. Make it a four-year extension. That's a slight increase over Derrick Henry. I'd be comfortable in that range. Now, if you really need to be the highest paid guy in the NFL, I could do, I might be willing to do it cosmetically for you if I'm the Giants. It won't be real. It'll be about as real is Alvin Kamara's 15 million per year and about as real as Tyreek Hill's 30 million per year, which is really 75 over 3 is the new money, not 120 over 4. In terms of realistically earnable. Yeah, I could do three real years. Let's say we could masquerade a David Johnson deal. We have a uh, highest paid player masquerading as a David Johnson deal. Yeah, that could be done. Yeah, where I've got like 39 over the first three years. And then let's say I stick like 22 and a half in each of the last two years. So I got 45 you're never going to earn. Plus I got the 39 potentially you could play through. And if we have to get to year four where you got 22 and a half million dollars in cash, we could work on making that realistic for both sides. But we're talking, if you got like... 84 over 5. Let's say we make it 85 over 5. I could pay you 17 million per year. You could say you're the highest paid guy. You won't have the most guarantees. You won't have 
McCaffrey's guaranteed signing. You won't have his overall guarantees, but if you want to say you're the highest paid guy, we can do that. But it's really going to be close to the 13 range on the base value. Yeah, you can get to 15 with incentives. I could do. I could potentially do that. You can say you're at 17. If that's what you need to get this thing done, I could do that. Um, but if you're talking a real hard and fast beating McCaffrey on a real deal, no, not happening for our franchise. We could potentially go year to year if you don't want to show up in July. We'll deal with that. But one, Saquon, now that um wants to be a giant for life, gets through the season healthy, it looks like they're going to go to the playoffs barring a huge collapse. If they can't get him done, I think he gets the franchise tag over Daniel Jones, but uh, that remains to be seen. Well, that's going to be uh, it for this week's uh, Inside the Cap. Uh, don't forget you can find me on Twitter um, at Corey Joel, that's C-O-R-R-Y-J-O-E-L. And read my work at CBSSports.com. Um, Agent Stake is the name of the column. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you back here next time. Goodbye.